You are watching the ACC on ESPN from the capital city of the Sunshine State and from the campus of Florida State University, the Donald L. Tucker Center, home to the homestanding Seminoles 3-0 early on on the year, taking on the Kennesaw State Owls out of the Atlantic Sun. Hi there, everybody. Pleased to be here with you, Sean Davison, alongside Adrian Crawford, who used to wear the garnet and gold here. Welcome to this side of things, good sir. <laughs> I'm sure you're looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun today. Man, I'm glad to be here with you guys. And, man, I'm looking forward to being back here in the Tucker Center and watching these Noles play against a really good Kennesaw State team. A really good Kennesaw State team that is trying to get their wheels underneath them. But if they are going to get their wheels underneath them, they'll first turn to their leading scorer, the sophomore guard out of Union, New Jersey, James Scott Adrian. He's averaging 16 points per game. Yeah, James Scott is a high-capacity scorer, 26 against Butler earlier this year. He also is a high-volume shooter. This guy has never met a shot he did not like and again it's really going to help this Kennesaw State team today. Well from him to Nick Masterson he doesn't really dislike anything from beyond the arc you see him knocking down the long two there averaging 10 points per game but he's shooting over 500 from three-point land. Absolutely Nick Masterson one of the best shooters in the country last year second in the NCAA in a three-point percentage shooting 53 percent this year really can stroke the ball. And then on the other side of things, the leading scorer for the Seminoles, averaging 17 points per game, it's Terrence Mann, shooting nearly 750 from the floor. Absolutely. Terrence Mann is the guy that every coach likes, a guy who can do it all. He rebounds, can score, and he can defend. Terrence Mann, I mean, again, the leader, I think, take, emerging as a leader this year for the Seminole basketball team. Seminoles have lost a few players to the NBA draft over recent seasons, but Terrence Mann remains as solid as ever, asserting himself inside a big reason why the Seminoles left Jamaica with the tournament victory. How about this athleticism from the fella? Terrence Mann leading the way, and the Seminoles will try to go 4-0 at home today. It'll be a lot of fun, and we're looking forward to the tip here in the Tucker Center. So why wait much longer for that tip here in the Tucker Center? The starting five, Jordan Jones, James Scott, Kyle Clark, Nick Masterson, and Bryson Lockley. For the Owls out of the A-Sun, you saw for a second there their head coach, Al Skinner, and there he is once again. A great coaching resume for Skinner. He was the head coach at Boston College as well as at Rhode Island. He's 4-3 and three against Florida State from his BC tenure, the 2001 National Coach of the Year and a two-time Big East Coach of the Year as well. For Florida State, it'll be Kofer, C.J. Walker, Angola, Obiagu, and Mann. Quickly, that ball knocked out of play, and possession will, I believe, go to the Owls. It will be Masterson to send the ball in to his team. Florida State's really got to set, set the tempo early, really pressure the ball. Kennesaw State loves to run this flex offense. Al Skinner's running for many years, but they have to get ball pressure early on, speed up the pace. Florida State has been one of the best teams defensively in the ACC, and they force an early turnover. Part of the calling card for Leonard Hamilton, who's in his 30th season as a head coach here between Miami and Oklahoma State, and now Florida State, the winningest coach at FSU, two-time ACC coach of the year, most recently in 2012, the eighth all-time winningest coach in ACC history, and of those 30 seasons, it's his 16th year in Tallahassee. Early jumper from Phil Kofer, no good. Ball sent right back out to C.J. Walker with a fresh haircut. And now, how about that? Big time, big time pass right there by Angola Rodas. Again, Florida State loves to throw the ball at the Remy Slob. These athletic guys, again, they have to keep the tempo going. Kennesaw State has to make sure they are packing in that paint. And goal leads everybody on the team now with 17 assists. Credit C.J. Walker with the seal. He'll keep it. And he can't get it to go, but there's Kofer with the follow. Four quick points for Phil Kofer. Absolutely. Phil Kofer is just a high-energy guy. In games like this, this is what you need to do because they have to speed Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State wants to slow you down, few possessions as uh, possible for them. They slow Florida State down. But, again, right here, again, good start for the Knowles. Kyle Clark, the point guard out of Daytona Beach. He's been the starting point guard for the last two seasons. He still has it. Giving it up to Lockley, who started against Butler, got er, got hurt rather against the Bulldogs, and has now re-entered the lineup. Ball will stay with the Owls. Officials Les Jones, Greg Evans, and Tim McGlarty. And I believe in that instance right there, Clark stepped on the line and out of play. So three. 
empty possessions for the Owls. That plays right into the hands of the, the, the Seminoles early on. That is what they have a focus on. This is really turning up the tempo, turnovers. C.J. Walker gives it up to Angola. He'll swing it down to the baseline, and Kofer, Kofer puts it up and gets it to go. Again, another high-energy bucket right there by Phil Kofer. Again. So Phil Kofer with six early points at 6 nothing, Florida State. The Owls have, have not even been able to get a shot off yet. Foul called against Florida State. I believe that's going to go against Obiagu. Instead, it will be against C.J. Walker, who had the initial reach in, and then Obiagu was there trying to clog the lane. One of the things Florida State's doing early, which is key against this flex, uh, flex offense that Kennesaw State runs, is ball pressure. And they've been doing a great job getting ball pressure because when you get ball pressure up there, it makes passing angles a lot harder for this Ken for uh, Kennesaw State. Case in point right there. Terrence Mann sends it inside to Obiagu, one of two great shot blockers on this team. Just can't connect on the little jump hook, and now here comes Clark back the other way. Clark, finally, somebody gets a shot off. It's short, and Obiagu comes down with the board. Walker now down the lane. One good early sign that you see from the Seminoles is the fact that them getting paint touches on the offensive end. Again, when their last game against Colorado State, they really struggled to get those paint touches. And just like we just saw C.J. Walker getting in there, getting those paint touches. That is key for Florida State is getting that ball into the paint. That's James Scott called for the foul. And now the dish out to Angola for three, and he's got him. So Brian Angola with the baseline three. It's 9-0 Florida State in the early three minutes here of play. Jumper on the other end, it's James Scott, who scored in double figures in three of Kennesaw State's four games this season. And the Owls are on the board. Watching James Scott reminds me so much of Lou Williams. I mean, a guy just a high-volume shooter, but also a high-volume scorer. And again, if they're going to have any shot to win the day, he's really got to have a big night. Angola fights off his defender. Now they'll swing it over to Kofer. Kofer had thoughts. Now he's trying to feed it inside to Mann. Mann with the alley-oop, and it just falls right into the hands of Obiagu. He tried to send it up. Obiagu now on the jump hook. Battle for the rebound. It's out of play. And I believe it will remain Florida State basketball. Checking out for the Seminoles is Phil Kofer. Fiondu Kabangali will check in. Kabangali, who scored in double-digit uh, figures in every game this season for the Seminoles. Absolutely. Fee, what they call him Fee. Fee, as I tell you what, has made one of the biggest jumps I've ever seen of anyone in a red shirt year before. Clark trying to push the pace and come back the other way. First Seminole turnover, and now they turn it right back over themselves. Cobb and Golly almost had it knocked away by Masterson. Now here's Terrence Mann. He'll send it out to Angola from the wing for three more and short. Fight for another rebound. That'll be off of Obiagu. I believe it should be Owl basketball. Instead, they'll send C.J. Walker out to send it back into his teammates. Checking in for the Seminoles, M.J. Walker. Big game against Colorado State. Four for five from the three-point line in the first half. A kid, a highly touted kid who can really, really shoot the ball. Reminds me of a, of a Seminole great uh, who was here for a year, Malik Beasley. Kind of the same feel, same vibe. Shoots it kind of the same way. And again, I think a guy who's going to be a great here in the Garden and Gold. So as you mentioned, Walker checking in, and it'll be Trent Forrest also checking in now, sending the ball into Angola. Forrest coming off of a bone bruise. They try to keep him healthy. They try to make sure he was healthy and ready to go in Jamaica. And the baseline, J for MJ Walker. One thing about Florida State is that you'll see a noticeable difference when Trent Forrest is in the game. The ball does not stick. He is not a ball, a guy who the ball sticks in his hands. He gets it moving. They get a lot of passes going. And again, with this team, that is very crucial for them to be successful, getting that ball moving. Seminoles come back the other way. Here's Walker for three. Got him. So how about that coming off the bench? Five quick points for MJ Walker. It's 14-2 Florida State. 
And I believe Kennesaw State calls a timeout here, but an early flurry from the Seminoles, and they lead 14-2, five minutes into the first half in the Donald L. Tucker Center. Welcome back to the Donald L. Tucker Center. A fast start for the homestanding Seminoles. They're up 14-2 over Kennesaw State, paying a visit out of the Atlantic Sun. The Owls forced to call their first time out as MJ Walker checks in and picks up five quick points. The story for the Seminoles, it's been three scores that have done it all for them. Angola, Covert, and Walker. And now the Owls will try to get something going on their end as well. Big stat early on in these first five minutes for Florida State is the fact of turnovers. Getting the ball again, turnover, have five turnovers early on again. Speeding the game up is going to be crucial for this game for the Noles. We talked about him in the open. Masterson, a sharp shooter for the Owls. Foul inside called against Jordan Jones, I believe. But he knocks down his first attempt at a three. So Masterson asserting himself with that first real opportunity from beyond the arc, knocking it down already. Again, Master is one of those guys where he gets his hands on the ball. You got to be there on the catch. And he's a guy who's all, what I love about him is a guy who's always prepared to shoot the basketball. And they always say, you know, great shooters are prepared shooters. And he's a guy always prepared. That ball hits his hand. You got to know he's going to be looking to put it up. Trent Forrest will send it in to P.J. Savoy. Savoy, the real sharpshooter for the Seminoles last season, coming off the bench, part of the boom squad that scored 40% of their points. Now here's MJ Walker. How about three more? Again, big, big time for MJ Walker coming and getting himself going. They're going to need him as the season goes on in the ACC. MJ Walker will be called for the foul there, but he prevents the clear lay-in for the Owls. James Scott was running up ahead to delay that ball in. And it was Walker who caught up with him and ended up bringing him down. Seventeen five, Florida State. Masterson will send it in. Owls have had a hard time getting the ball in play and almost turned it over right away. Lockley lays it up and will head to the free throw line. One thing that's starting to happen now that I love what Kennesaw State's doing, again, they're starting to settle down, getting them pushed down. So a foul called there against Fiondu Kabangali. And Lockley makes the first of his two free throws. One thing Florida State defensively they always are trying to do with teams is to get teams to come. I mean, they have great secondary help. And again, they have those big seven footers in there to block shots. And so again, they're trying to always lead you into that help defense. Good start at the free throw line there for Bryson Lockley. He's only a 400 free throw shooter on the season so far, but makes the first two there. Now here's Cobb and Golly double teamed. And does a nice job getting it out to Walker without shuffling. Here's Savoy from the wing. How about three more? It's an early three party for the Seminoles. P.J. Savoy, that man's range is as soon as you walk into Leon County, that man is ready to lock and load. And for him, too, to have other guys on this team that are capable of shooting the three and making plenty, defenses can't key in on him as much because he's not just their guy. M.J. Walker! I'm telling you what, here's the difference. I think this team could actually be better than they were last year because of the fact of what you just said. They've got multiple guys who can shoot the ball. Last year, they really struggled shooting from the three. And again, as we've seen right now with P.J. Savoy and M.J. Walker, guys who really can knock it down. Kennesaw State needs a bit of a rally here. Here's Hooker, baseline J over everything. But how about that follow? Jordan Jones makes it 23 to nine. He throws it down. And the Owls end the Florida State run. Jordan Jones, the best athlete, I believe, on that Kennesaw State team. Offensive guy gets after on the offensive glass. Brandon Allen knocks down the baseline, Jay, and Florida State comes right back with two more of their own. Hooker running the court and drawing the foul, so he'll go to the free throw line. It'll be a foul against Cobb Gale. A chance for a couple more here for the Owls.
Kamangali picking up that second foul again. Today, without Chris Kamaji being in the game, again, uh, depth's going to be a little bit short among the bigs at Florida State. So, again, that's going to hurt him just a little bit with Kamangali getting that second foul. So Kamangali heads out. Obiagu will head back in for Florida State. Lockley heads out and heading in for the Owls is Tristan Jarrett. Masterson will check out as well. And Isaac Biyamba is also in for the Owls. Isaac Biyamba is somebody that the Kennesaw State coaching staff is really high on. I mean, he's a high-energy, high-motor guy. He's the type of guy, undersized big, but in their conference, the Atlantic Sun, he's the type of guy who's like all-league type of player. That's kind of their build. Big, strong bodies, physical, get to the glass. And, again, they're really high on him on the Kennesaw State staff. Trent Forrest is putting some contact back in, perhaps had one knocked loose there. Man, C.J. Walker, all purpose over there, is cleaning up, doing a little <laughs> bit of everything over there, man. Well, hey, I mean, as a facilitator, as a point guard, I mean, you're used to doing a little bit of everything. He but is. I think he's, <laughs> he's going above and beyond even. <laughs> he is. My man was, I mean, he sweeped the floor earlier. He was giving M.J. Walker some uh, defensive, giving a little defensive help and tips. I'm surprised he helped Trent Forrest put his contact in as well. I mean, he's doing it all today. Good to see this guy back in the lineup, too. You never know how long it takes to come back and be ready to go after a bone bruise. It's yeah. one of those tricky injuries. And from the very get-go, talking with the coaching staff, even during exhibition season, the goal was to get him back by Jamaica. They've got Forrest back. He'll put those contacts in and take a seat, and it will be C.J. Walker who checks in for the Seminoles in his place. But still, good to see him back in the lineup. I believe this is now his third game of the four for the Seminoles this season. Absolutely. Trent Forrest is just a, I mean, he is the prototypical, I believe, point guard. I mean, he does a great job of getting everyone involved. Big guard can defend. And again, team first guy, type of guy you want leading your uh, ball club. P.J. Savoy. And now here's C.J. Walker. Again, even if you see when Trent Forrest went out, and the one thing the Noles have to continue to keep getting better at. Oh, what a great kick. Good job. Great kick. And, again, that's what Florida State has to do. But when you saw when Trent went out, again, the ball starts to stick a little bit more. Florida State's got to be getting four or five passes per possession because they get teams moving. They're lifting guys up, uh, bigs up on the ball screen, and they got to get it going from side to side. But that was a great job by C.J. Walker, again, what we talked about earlier, getting paint touches so that then they can get out to those three-point shooters, uh, Brandon Allen, M.J. Walker, and P.J. Savoy. Seminoles lead 25-11 here at the Donald L. Tucker Center. James Scott trying to spark a little rally for the Owls. Now here's Hooker guarded by C.J. Walker. Lane absolutely clogged by Obiagu and Allen. Kick out three, no good. Fight for the rebound. Seminoles come away with it. Man, it's something about when you're going in there with Obiagu and, and Kamaji. I mean, it is going in there to the great wall. Great pass. Big time pass right there. C.J. Walker. Great prime from Walker to Obiagu. The Seminoles lead 27 to 11. But you're right, defensively, when you get that big seven-foot body in there clogging the lane like it is, it makes that defense all the more potent for the Seminoles. Absolutely, it does. See, the thing about it with Florida State and a lot of teams, uh, I know Colorado State tried to stop is this, is that they try to clog the lane because of the bigs and their athleticism. They don't want to get those lobs like what we just saw here. Because, again, right there you see Jared. Jared does not help in and help down on that pick and roll. And, again, it's going to lead to lobs. And so you got to pick your poison with Florida State because if they get paint touches, you're going to have to stop the lob and clog the lane or you got to give up threes. And right now they got both working. So when they're playing like this, they're going to be a tough team to beat. MJ Walker sends it into CJ Walker. It's a little walker to walker. Picked up the lob there to Obiagu and then picked up the steal to set up this little possession here. Now here's MJ Walker trying to go down the lane, puts it up, and it's over everything. And now here comes Kennesaw State. Hooker, pull up Jay, gets it to go. Big time shot right there by Hooker again. Uh, Hooker's a guy who's not a, a great three-point shooter, but a great mid-range guy. Really likes to get in a mid-range game to pull up, and we saw that right there. He led the plus-minus last season, coming off the bench at plus 35, averaged six points per game. And now here's Masterson with the rebound. And the Owls trying to string together some points. That's it. 
But again, as you can see right now, what Florida State has got to get ready and get better. And I think, again, there's a lot of great things CJ CJ Walker does. As CJ Walker does is make sure he's getting that ball, spreading it out to people, not letting that ball stick in their hands. And we'll be right back to Tallahassee. Florida State up 14. Just a little over half of the first half left here in the Donald L. Tucker Center. A hot shooting start for the Seminoles. They're shooting Adrian about 63% from three and 58% in general from the floor. They only have one turnover so far in the half. And as we were talking about earlier, when you can combine those kind of shooting stats with that few turnovers, plus forcing five or six of your own, yep. that's a pretty lethal combination. It's absolutely, and again, what they are doing is they are speeding the game up. And that's what they wanted to do from the beginning of the game is they wanted to put ball pressure and speed Kennesaw State up so they can't get set in their flex offense. As a matter of fact, so much so, I mean, Al Skinner's throwing that flex offense for years, and so far they haven't been able really to run it at all, which, again, that is their bread and butter, and Florida State is disrupting them the entire time. So it's a good-looking, uh, good beginning for the Knowles. Really good start for the Knowles. Tristan Jarrett makes the first of his two free throws. The freshman guard out of Brownsville, Tennessee. And Jarrett makes them both. Jarrett, a 600 free throw shooter on the season. Now Trent Forrest comes back the other way. Wyatt Wilkes checking in for the Seminoles. Terrence Mann also back in the lineup. Wilkes driving down the baseline, now kicking it out to Forrest. Forrest now down the lane, lays it up and in. Again, as you can see, when Trent Forrest gets in the game, there's just a different pop from the Seminoles as far as that ball getting moving and that ball getting touches. Well, he got the contact back in. He's back on the floor. Now here's Hooker coming back the other way. And there's a nice little athletic lay in there for Hooker. Wilkes thought for a second about pulling it and taking the three himself. Now here he is taking the three right here. In and out. Kofer, how about that for effort for the rebound? Phil Kofer is that guy, I always say, Phil Kofer is that guy that you want in a street fight because he is that guy who is ready to go at all points of time with his effort and his energy. And again, being huge so far for the Seminoles. Unfortunate turnover there from Angola. It'll be Hooker trying to come back the other way. Masterson trying to pull up for three, and he's got three more. Again, one of the best shooters in all the nation right there. 53% on the year. And just like that, Kennesaw State back within nine. Now here's Angola to Wilkes. Wilkes on the drive, and he's fouled on the way in. It'll be a foul called against Lockley. Forrest sends it into man. Right now, Kennesaw State in a matchup 2-3 zone right now. Again, Florida State still against the zone. You can't stand around on the perimeter, but you still got to get paint touches just like that by Trent Forrest. Got the paint touch, draw the contact. And Seminoles again finding more success one way or another inside. And it'll be Forrest who goes to the line to shoot a couple. One great thing is you see early on for the Seminoles at that last media timeout with eight assists. Again, eight assists right now and one turnover. Again, if you're playing like that throughout the year, again, that's going to bode well for your ball club. Trent Forrest making his first free throw of the season right there. It's now 30-20 to 20 in favor of the Seminoles. Sophomore guard out of Chipley, Florida. And he's got them both. It's 31-20 FSU. Hooker, nice feed. Lockley fouled by Kofer. Again, one of the things that Hooker is doing is that he is attacking and getting that ball downhill, getting inside to that paint, then creating some havoc for the Seminoles once he gets in there. Doing a great job so far for the Kennesaw State team. Matter of fact, he's one of the reasons why they're still in this game right now. So Lockley will go to the line to shoot a couple. No good there.
Lockley, the sophomore forward out of Houston, Texas. And he'll split the pair. It's a 10-point lead for FSU. Man stripped on his way to the bucket. And it'll remain FSU basketball. Again, Seminoles need to continue to focus on getting that ball from side to side. Sometimes right there it gets stuck, but again, great job, Terrence Mann, again, getting that ball, getting paint touches on the offensive end of the floor. Man, kick out Wilkes. Three more, just short. Good follow, Trent Forrest. In the right place at the right time, puts it up and in, and it's a 12-point FSU lead. Good matchup right here between Hooker and uh, Trent Forrest. Great off, really good offensive player, and I believe one of the seminal best defenders in Trent Forrest. Wilkes chasing Jarrett off that three-point line, and he sends it through his teammates and over the back, so it'll be another turnover from the Owls, and Florida State has a chance to stretch the lead a little bit more. Kofer sets the screen for Mann. Mann kicks it out to Wilkes. And goal to Wilkes, swinging it over to Mann. He'll step back, take the three from the wing, and it's over the head of Wilkes, but right there is Angola to collect it. And he'll send it right through everybody, and it'll be a turnover from Florida State. One of the things I think Florida State, as I'm watching them on the offensive end of the floor, has got to become better at is their angles on their ball screens because when you start playing at higher levels, even now, they're not clipping the man when they're uh, when the guys come to set the screen, which, again, the screen becomes ineffective. The key for a screen is to run the guy off the screen, and that's, again, a working between the guard and the bigs. And so they've really got to start working on that because if not, teams are going to go underneath it every single time and have that ball screen be ineffective. Jarrett throws it away inside. Now here's four. Seminoles have the numbers. Man lays it in. Really loving what we're seeing so far from uh, Terrence Mann again. A guy who I believe has emerged as the leader of this team, and I believe how he goes is how the Seminoles will go this year. Underneath, Jarrett beat Wilkes, and on the drive, he picks up a couple more. break that call foul against Florida State but they still have a 12 point lead here in Tallahassee back here in Florida State Florida State up by 12 over Kennesaw State inside the under eight timeout and back here in the Donald L Tucker Center 714 left here in the first half and here's Savannah Slifer competed in college basketball's newest preseason tournament. It was the Jamaica Classic played at the Montego Bay Convention Center. And after victories over Fordham University and Colorado State, Florida State brought home the first place trophy. Coach Ham said not only was he pleased with the team's play, of course, bringing home first place, but also what he learned. He said the Colorado State's defense really challenged the Knolls in experience and with only one returning starter from last season, experience like that is absolutely invaluable. This is the Knolls' second trip to Jamaica this year. The first was in August. They had a 12-day trip where they played three games and they got a little deep sea fishing in to build camaraderie with lots of events around Jamaica. So looking to make tournaments and first place trophies a habit. Back to you guys. Thank you so much, Savannah. And we're back underway here in Tallahassee, Kennesaw State. Trying to come back the other way and continue a little run here that has cut the Florida State lead to 12. Jordan Jones, and now Hooker. Hooker guarded by Obiagu, can't get the roll. 
One thing Florida State is doing an incredible job on is right now limiting the shots from James Scott. Again, a guy we came in averaging about 16 a game. They have made it a priority. They've taken some pride in limiting his shots. He's only got one shot so far within 14 minutes of this game. Great job of the Knowles. Foul called underneath, I believe, against MJ Walker. It'll be his second in the team's eighth. So free throws coming for Hooker here. Again, another great job by Hooker getting ball downhill, being able to make a play. Again, he's doing doing his best to absolutely keep this Kennesaw State team in the game. Doing a good job of making plays, but it's going to have to do a little bit better job of making those free throws. Missing the first one, and try to connect on the second, and does. Obiagu, off the mark, gets it back. Puts it up, still can't get it to go, and there's Kofer. I was talking with him just the other day. Kofer, of course, having both ankles worked on, both operations on the ankles, and he came back last year. I said, Phil, is it safe to say that this year you're feeling a little bit stronger, a little bit more comfortable on those ankles, and that's what's making the difference for you so far? And he said, absolutely. Absolutely. Phil Kofer, again, was a guy, I mean, he's a team guy, he's a warrior, and he's a guy who's going to come out there. And last year, you know, he played probably about 70, 75% last year. Brian Angola picks up a foul. It's Kosti Yankovic checking in for the Owls and fouling Walker. Still just the fifth foul for the Owls. Seminoles not yet in the one and one. They have a 13 point lead. CJ Walker, three, no. There's Obiagu for the rebound. I believe Obiagu has got a chance to be a really, really good player for the Seminoles. I mean, again, so far, I mean, super active on the glass. I mean, a guy who has great IQ, knows what he's doing on the offense and defensive end of the floor. I mean, defensive end of the floor, I mean, great shot blocker. I think he's going to be one of those uh, one of those bigs that Coach Amar has. Wow, big time play by Angola Rodas to Ike right there. Ike picks up the dunk off the assist from Angola. And the Seminoles extend the lead to 15. Just over five minutes left to play here in Tallahassee. I'll amend that five minutes left before the half, rather. Obiagu trying to set that screen for man. He'll send it over to Kofer. Kofer picks up three. Absolutely. Not only is Phil Kofer healthy, one of the things that uh, we can definitely see through so far this year is he's really gotten better shooting the basketball, especially with the game of basketball where he's going to that stretch four. He has got to be able to shoot the basketball, and then he has really added that to his game, which is adding a lot of value to the Seminoles. Feed right into Jordan Jones. Three Seminole defenders absolutely got beat by Jones. That's his second dunk of the game. It's 42-26 FSU. Obiagi sets the screen for Walker, drives down the lane, and gets the roll. One thing about this Florida State team is that they will just wear you out with bodies upon bodies that come in the game. It's like last year when the boom squad would come in, and again, around that 12-minute mark of the second half, that teams are just deflated because of the amount of just, again, athletes, and again, they got that same group coming back again. And Hooker. It was only about a 200 three-point shooter. Knocks down a three, and they cut the lead right back to 15. Seminoles went on an early run. The lead really hasn't gotten a whole lot less than nine, but it really hasn't stretched a whole lot more than that 12 to 14 that it was earlier either. So credit Kennesaw State for settling in. They just haven't been able to do much to close the gap. Now here's Walker for three more. How about it? Good. Great pass right there by Phil Kofer. As we can see, as the Seminoles are getting that ball from side to side, and then getting that ball to the paint again, good things are happening. Masterson off the mark. Seminoles look to come back the other way. Kofer 
just off the mark. I believe a foul underneath will be called against Obiagu. Little shove, trying to collect that rebound. Timeout called on the floor with Florida State up 47 to 29 here in the Donald L. Tucker Center. The homestanding Seminoles are rolling at home. Less than three minutes before the half here in Tallahassee and the homestanding Seminoles lead at 47 to 29. Sean Davison, Adrian Crawford, Savannah Slifer, our entire ACC Network Extra team here at the Donald L. Tucker Center as the Seminoles shooting 50% from the perimeter, 40, 54 rather percent from the floor in general. They're perfect at the free throw line. They're playing pretty decent defense here, Adrian. It's a hard combination to beat if you're Kennesaw State. Absolutely, this Florida State team, and again, they came out really right to the game plan. Ball pressure sped the game up. And again, when this team, just with the athletes that they have and they're playing at this level, and like you said, turning them over and shooting the ball, it's, it's going to be a tough team to beat. Seminoles have forced plenty of turnovers, but they have also been defending well and fouling. So Kennesaw State's been able to go to the free throw line and make a couple to try to keep this thing from getting too out of hand. And now Jones makes them both to cut the lead back to 16. Again, if you missed it earlier, Florida State off to a very hot start, especially from beyond the arc. Took an early lead and a big one at that, but it's been Kennesaw State who settled in and really hasn't let them extend the lead much more than where you see it right now. Man for three. Yes. Big shot right there, Terrence Mann again. That is probably was one of the biggest holes in his game, but over the summer, you know, talking to the coaches, that is one of the biggest things he improved on and worked on is becoming a spot, a spot and catch guy, and he's really doing a good job this year. Lockley had it knocked out of play by Kofer. One thing I think you're seeing the Owls doing is they're trying to push that pace a little bit more, run the court a little bit quicker, and get ahead of that Florida State defense as best they can. Jay, no good. And now Hooker with the rebound. Again, another job, a great job by the Seminoles against James Scott. Stopping James Scott from getting attempts up again. Every shot he's had has been contested right there. Yankovic, the junior forward out of Serbia, makes his first three. Became a starter after the Lockley injury and now coming in off the bench. Kofer inside and a strong job in the post there for Phil Kofer. Picks up a couple more. 13 points for Phil Kofer. Again, it's great to see Phil Kofer out here healthy going this year. Again, a guy who, I mean, a guy, huge heart. Guy's a great teammate, and again, you love to see guys like that get it done. Masterson fouled and then bumped by Savoy, so it's going to be a three and one for the sharpshooter for the Owls. Man, P.J. Savoy violated one of the cardinal rules of basketball. That is a cardinal center of basketball. Do not foul the three-point shooter. But again, when you watch it right here, you're late on the chase off that screen. Again, a guy like Masterson, you have to stay stuck to his body. And again, he creates separation. A guy like that, he's like we said earlier, he's a catch and shoot, ready to go guy. And he's going to put that ball in the basket. So four points there for Masterson and the Owls. And they cut the lead to 14. Nick Masterson, three for five from three-point range already so far this uh, this ball game. Man down the lane, and no problem for Terrence Mann. Strong take to the basket, and it's 54-38 FSU. Big time take there right th that time by Terrence Mann, and again, What's happening is this, is that because Florida State's making shots, you have to stay out on shooters, which leaves a lane open, again, with them throwing lobs. And so, again, that's going to leave the driver right now. Wide open shots at the rim. Hooker, mid-range J. Hooker has done everything he can to keep the Owls with a pulse here in this first half. Credit to him for the job he's done, but the Owls just can't get much else to go. Absolutely. I'm loving watching uh, Tyler Hooker play. Again, a guy trying to keep him in this game. But again, he's got to get some of his other teammates going. They got to get themselves going as well. Inside the final minute here in the first half at the Donald L. Tucker Center. Man, trying to create some running room. It's going to be Savoy who takes a deep three, and it's just off the front end of the rim. 
Six second differential inside. Yankovic gets it to go. Seminoles now can hold for the final possession. Their lead cut once again back down to 12, which has been about the comfort zone here in the first half. What's interesting is this is when Florida State allows that ball to stick in their hands, a lot of, again, guys got on the ball, say, ball holding. What ends up happening is, again, this is when we start seeing this lead kind of dwindle down. But when they get that ball moving, then things change. Forrest has it stripped. Hooker comes back the other way, heaves it up. And it's off the mark, 54-42 at the half for Florida State. Adrian, I think the big takeaway, aside from that problem that you mentioned for Florida State, in general, they're still shooting over 50% from the floor. I mean, that's an, I mean, that's a credit to these guys, their preparation, preparation as coaching staff. And again, it was a focus this year for that Florida State team to be a better shooting basketball team. Savannah Slifer is standing by with Leonard Hamilton, and away she goes. Savannah, take it away. Coach. Your team has been dominant on defense. What has impressed you most about the defense today? I don't think we've been dominant on offense or defense because they've been penetrating. They're shooting close to 50% from the floor. Uh, I think our defense is very poor. We're giving up dribble drives all the way to the basket. We're not very sound for the day defensively. We've had, we played in spurts offensively. We made some shots, but we're still not executing very well offensively. We play like an inexperienced young team uh, that, that has a difficult time uh, with, with, with having a killer, a killer attitude. All right. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, thank you so much, Savannah. We'll head for a break, but Florida State up 54-42 to as they head to the locker room, and we'll be right back to Tallahassee and the Tucker Center in just a couple of moments. Back here in Tallahassee at the half, it's 54-42. The homestanding Seminoles, a hot shooting start for them. And they have a nice lead as they head to the locker room at the Donald L. Tucker Center. So, as we enjoy halftime, we will send you and let you watch the first part of our series on the Jam With Ham Midnight Madness Special. Over the roar of an 80s music mashup, an excited crowd awaits. Through an aisle of cheerleaders and shaking pom-poms, the competitors file onto the court. And finally, parading onto the scene, a man donning a disco afro can be spotted. And that 80s throwback afro signals one thing. It's time to tip off the FSU men's basketball season and jam with him. It's just really good to see the fans come out to see what we got coming this year. New faces, new freshmen, stuff like that. So it's just good for us to know that we're going to have support this year as well as we did last year. Though players were no strangers to opening the season with the ninth annual Jam with Ham event, it was the coaches who displayed true mastery of the night. I'm a soul man. One of the classic movies of the 80s. We were taking it back retro style. Yeah, for me, I'll probably say what got me the most coming out and seeing Coach Jones with the sideline. I was like, hold on, he's trying to get my type bid. I, I don't know, he told me the name, but I forgot, I forgot what the name of it was. But Coach Jones wasn't the only one turning heads and earning commentary from the peanut gallery. Coach Helm, I mean, he, he had the ladies with him. He had Amanda and Danielle, so, I mean, he made, he, the hair may have been a little extra, but, I mean, it was a good, it was good and fun. Back here in Tallahassee, Florida State leads it 54 to 42 at the half in the Donald L. Tucker Center. Pleased to be here with you, Sean Davidson, alongside Adrian Crawford. And Adrian, as 
something I don't think fans here at Florida State truly expected of the season was how good a shooting team Florida State is. They're shooting above 50% from the floor, and that's really allowed them to have their fourth double-digit lead in four games this season. Absolutely. I think it was the focus this year of this upcoming Seminole team with the coaching staff. I mean, going out there, as we see, MJ Walker, again, prized recruit, a guy who can really shoot the ball, four for five early on the half. P.J. Savoy, again, has range uh, as soon as he enters uh, the county. And again, these guys can really, really shoot the basketball. MJ Walker came off the bench and gave Florida State five quick points. They had a big lead, but it really didn't get a whole lot bigger than 14 or so points. James Scott and here's Hooker and the sharpshooter Masterson connecting that have kept Florida State within that 12 to 14 point range. But here's something that I think everybody's really happy to see here, Adrian. Phil Kofer is healthy and asserting himself early and often. Absolutely. Phil Kofer is that guy that you're absolutely trying to go for, a guy that you're rooting for, a road warrior, a guy who'll give his whole body again last year, playing on two bad ankles. But again, he's healthy this year. He's gotten to gym. He's gotten better. And again, we're seeing his uh, hard work out here on the floor today. Season high for Kofer is 15, career high 21. He had 13 in the first half alone. We'll be right back for the second half of this one. Again, Seminoles leading by 12 at the Donald L. Tucker Center here in Tallahassee, Florida. Final seconds ticking away before we begin the second half here in Tallahassee. It's a 54-42 lead for the Florida State Seminoles. And before we get the second half underway, we'll go ahead and take a look at the first half statistics, Florida State 22 for 39 on the floor, 18 rebounds. They're shooting 50% from three. They're perfect so far at the free throw line. But Kennesaw State did a nice job, especially later on, Adrian, of forcing Florida State to foul, and that's how they were able to keep the Seminoles on, uh, honest. Rather, they're 11 for 13 from the line. Absolutely, uh, Kennesaw State started to settle down. In the first five minutes, uh, the first half, they had five turnovers. In the last 15 minutes, they only had they ended up having three turnovers. They really started to settle themselves down. But again, they've got to get. They really have to get James Scott going. If they want to have any shot of getting back in the game, James Scott's really got to start filling that basket up a little bit. So the team's about to head right back out onto the court. They'll switch sides of the court. And you see both Al Skinner and Leonard Hamilton. Ike Obiagu getting the start today for the Seminoles with Chris Kumaji out of the lineup here today. These two coaches, Al Skinner, Leonard Hamilton, I mean, again, two legendary great coaches in college basketball, been doing it for a long time. It's good to see both these guys still on the sideline uh, in college basketball, investing into these young men's lives. Again, real heroes in the college basketball era. All right, it'll be Terrence Mann who will send the ball in to C.J. Walker, and we're underway here in the second half. Obiagu setting the screen for Walker, guarded by Hooker. And now Angola with the feed into Obiagu, who spins and comes up short. And it'll be a rebound for Scott, who tries to come back the other way. Three on two, now four on two for a second. And now the Seminoles' defense gets back on D. And it'll be Hooker trying to figure out what to do here against a defense that until late in that first half did a good job of playing hard defense without fouling. Florida State's done a great job getting them out of their uh, getting them out of their uh, zone, their flex offense. But again, big time shot right there by Scott. Again, as we said in the break, Scott has got to get himself going to get these uh, uh, to get Kennesaw State back in the game. So James Scott makes a three, and the lead is down to nine. It's about as low as the lead has been since Florida State stretched it, and that is a reason why. Because as you mentioned, C.J. Walker and the Seminoles have been such a good shooting team; those lanes are just open. And whether it's been C.J. Walker, M.J. Walker, Terrence Mann, Phil Kofer, they've been able to take advantage throughout the entire first half and now early in the second. Absolutely. Again, these guys are making shots again. When they played Colorado State, Colorado State packed the paint in. And again, second half of that game, Florida State started to make shots. And so again, as Kennesaw State scouting this game, they're realizing they got to pick, they got to pick their poison. And they decided, hey, we're going to make sure that they're not going to try to get lobs at the rim. But once Florida State started making shots, it kind of changes the game a little bit. And these guys are getting easy straight line drives to the basket. So the lead back up to 11 for Florida State. And now here's Angola on the drive down the baseline. He'll kick it out to C.J. Walker. He gets Great it back. Pass. Great pass, C.J. Walker. And that's just too good. A great pass and a wide open Angola. And that's just asking for three from Florida State. They connect. It's 59-45 Seminoles. 
say this on the perimeter, you got to fake one to make one. C.J. Walker faked the pass. Again, got the defense shifting through a great pass. The corner, big time three. Jones in and out. Now Coper with the rebound comes back the other way. C.J. Walker now pull up and connects. There we go. C.J. Walker, instant offense for this no. Nickname Little Savage. He comes out there, and this guy is tough as nails, and he is getting it done early on in the second half in Seminoles. So after an early three from Scott, a layup by Walker, a three from Angola, and another three from C.J. Walker. And now Scott tries to lay it up and in. Three Seminoles there to box it out, and now they'll come back the other way. Angola fakes it, sends it out to Kofer. Kofer spins, mid-range J, and he gets it to go. That'll tie the season high for Phil Kofer. Phil Kofer deep in his bag right there with the spin move fade off. Looking good. Big time shot right there by Masterson again. I think the Seminoles need to learn, understand this guy can shoot the basketball. That is the fourth three for Masterson. So far today, he's four for six, and just like that, joins the double-digit club here today. Masters is one of those guys that you look at, there's not a great athlete at all, but man, if you can learn to do something really well, which he is, he's an elite-level shooter, which again, allows him to be successful. Here he goes again, great pass inside. And now here's Hooker for the three from the wing. Fight underneath. I believe a, a shove will be called against Florida State. It'll be against Terrence Mann. So it'll remain Owl basketball. It'll be Masterson out to send it in. Again, Terrence Mann right there. A little again, a little touch foul right there. Got a little lazy on the box out. And he gets the ball right back. Same guy. And he comes away with it anyway. And Gola. Aggressive, athletic drive inside, and the Seminoles pick up a couple more points in the paint. One thing the Seminoles have, they have some guys who can come in and give you instant offense. You know, Brian's one of those guys. So is uh, MJ Walker, CJ Walker, uh, PJ Savoy. They got guys that come and get you instant offense. Here's Scott from behind the screen. Scott makes a three. You can definitely tell that that was a point of emphasis at halftime by Coach Skinner to get that ball to that man's hand. Had one, had two shot attempts in the first half. He's already got three within the first five minutes of this game, of this half. 66-50 FSU, the man they call Fee, can't get it to go, but Angola is right there for the follow. Fee has done such a great job of getting his body in shape. Uh, again, lost around 25 pounds. I mean, a guy who spent a lot of time in his red shirt year used it to be effective. Some guys don't use their red shirt year uh, as effective, but this guy surely did. I mean, again, to be a great contributor here for the Seminoles. Hooker splits the defenders, but charges C.J. Walker. It's an offensive foul, and we'll take a timeout. It's 68 to 50, Florida State here at home at the Donald L. Tucker Center. 68-50, Florida State here in Tallahassee, Florida. Trying to go 4-0 on the season. And they have possession here. They'll try to stretch it a little bit more. Great shooting from the Seminoles. They're 10 of 18 from three-point land here at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Sean Davidson alongside former Seminole Adrian Crawford. Joined by Savannah Slifer on the sidelines. We'll check in with her toward the end of the game with our player of the game and Great Terrence Mann. Pass. Great pass right there by Trent Forrest. Mann trying to make a case for himself to be interviewed by Savannah Slifer there. <laughs> <laughs> Terrence Mann. I always tell people, Terrence Mann is the public brand Jimmy Butler. He's not great value, but public brand Jimmy Butler. He is a good imitation of that man. Again, does a little bit of it all. Masterson nearly stripped by Forrest in set. Nice feed to Hooker and the underneath lay-in from Hooker. Again, I'm super impressed with this kid, Hooker. He has done such an incredible job today. Again, keeping this team in the game. Really like his game. Seminoles can't connect. Now here's Scott trying to come back the other way. He's now made a couple of threes here in the second half. As you mentioned earlier, Adrian, only had a couple of shot attempts in the first half. Again, he's one of those guys you can see right here. He's a high-volume shooter and scorer, so he's the type of guy. He gets a couple shots going. That's all he needs. 
And here's another one from three. No good. Foul underneath. And it's called against Fiondu Cobb and Gali. Take another look at that little underneath pass to Hooker. Hooker going up there. Good reverse layup. Again, like they say today with the jelly roll that time. Chance here for a little run. Scott draws contact and gets it to go. Again, Scott's getting going again. If I am Kennesaw State, I am every time down the floor, I am running something his way, getting his hands on the ball. Guys like him are high volume scores, spurt type of guys. He's he's feeling it right now. They gotta let him get some shots up, get it going. MJ Walker checks back in off the mark, gets it back, goes up, has it stripped, and it rolls out of play. On this Florida State team, MJ Walker reminds me of uh of Golden State Warrior Nick Young, where he gets in the game, and it's just like the man is a walking bucket. He steps in, he's going to make shots, he's going to score. Again, really, really love this young guy's game. Walker, another, just another player in a string of decorated players to make their way to Tallahassee, recruiting up considerably for Leonard Hamilton, especially in recent years when you consider you've got an NBA player in Beasley who played here, NBA players in Bacon as well as Xavier Rattan Mays, who's now playing with the Knicks, and Jonathan Isaac, who's with the Magic, all guys who played here just last year. Even. That, that's it. And I think you got to give a lot of credit to Coach Ham. Again, he's known as such an incredible recruiter, but also you got to give great credit to, again, when they added Coach Charlton Young, CY, um, again, a, a longtime assistant coach, Dennis Gates, and Stan Jones. I mean, they got a great staff over there, guys with a lot of ties in the basketball world, and they're doing an incredible job on the recruiting trail. Man! Again, like we said earlier, when Trent Forrest comes in the game for this Seminole team, they're a different <laughs> basketball team. I mean, the energy's up, the ball's moving around. And again, Trent Forrest is one of those guys, you may not see it all the time in the stat sheet, but he is one of those guys who is a, probably, I believe, one of the most valuable guys on this floor. And then when you put him and C.J. Walker together, I mean, you've got a dynamic duo in the backcourt. Masterson couldn't handle the pass from Scott. Now the Seminoles will try to extend that lead a little bit more. Force gives it up to Man, who sends it across to MJ Walker. Baseline three over everything. And great athletic effort there from Biondu Kabangali to get it back into play for his teammates. Has it knocked away, and another great effort defensively from Scott. Scott, coast to coast. Ken's been watching this Florida State Seminole team play right here. One thing has got to happen again. We're seeing a lot of times right now, Terrence Mann at times, Tom C.J. Walker, that ball sticking to their hands. They've got to get that ball moving. When the Seminoles move that basketball, they are a great, great basketball team. Biondu Kabangali gets himself on the board. He's been in double-digit scoring in the first three games this season. Got into early foul trouble, so now finally getting some more minutes to even get a few shot attempts off. But now Kabangali on the stat sheet. Up ahead to MJ Walker. MJ Walker, mid range two in and out. Again, so far in these first nine minutes, we've seen nine points by Scott. And again, it's helping keep this Kennesaw State team in a little bit of a, a little bit of a striking distance. Common Galley. Russell's down that rebound, and now after a few really quick possessions back and forth up and down the court, some will slow down the pace a little bit, trying to set something up. One thing is, again, that, uh, you know, as a reminder to, uh, to those that are watching the game, again, these guys are still getting into some of the cobwebs worked out early in the year. Guys still trying to get in shape, and so we're starting to see when that ball gets up and down a little bit, we're seeing guys a little bit heavy breathing and again, getting a little bit winded, but again, that favors Florida State with the depth that they have on their bench. Tom and Galley gets up and down, will head to the free throw line, and we'll head to a commercial break here in Tallahassee. Scores today for Kennesaw State and Florida State, Tyler Hooker and Phil Kofer. Phil Kofer, Adrian, got off to a hot start, finished with the flurry right before the half, has gotten himself back on the scoreboard in the second half, and Hooker has really been the presence throughout for Kennesaw State that has stepped up in the absence of Scott, 
But now that Scott's gotten going, it'll be interesting to see what Hooker's got to offer as well. Again, absolutely. Both these guys are playing well. And the thing about both of these guys is they both are those road warriors. So they're the type of street fight type of guys. They play hard. They get in there. They battle tough-nosed kids. And again, in games like this, these grinded-out type of games, you know, those are the type of kids who are going to rise to the occasion. So Fiondu Kamangali makes a couple of free throws. And Kamangali, after being in foul trouble early, has now picked up four quick points for the Seminoles. He'll check out, however. And in comes Phil Kofer. Again, right there, MJ Walker, great job on ball pressure that time. Again, making it, disrupting it up a little bit for uh, that Kennesaw State team. Just off the mark there a couple of times from Hooker and Jankovic. Terrence Mann sends it out to Angola. Angola now back inside to Mann, and he gets it to go. Great feed that time by Terrence Mann. Getting it out to Angola Rodas, and Angola Rodas uh, gave him the love back by that pass inside, and again, a good left-hand finish. Yankovic will kick it out to Masterson. And aside from early on in this half, Masterson just hasn't had the opportunities to put up the three ball. Yeah, Florida State, you can tell that they made an adjustment at halftime or really made a point of emphasis at halftime to really limit his catches. But also, when he did catch, they're trying to run him off that line. Again, great shooters. Uh, you want to run him off that line. You want to run at him, high hand, contest, make them put the ball on the floor. Again, he's uh, percentages drop tremendously when he has to go to the, uh, put it down one or two dribbles on the deck. For as much as we've talked about Florida State shooting well, especially from three, they're shooting 50%. Kennesaw State shooting 53% from the perimeter, and a lot of that has, up until lately, been Masterson. Here's Jarrett for three. Again, Just short. Great. Nice set right there by, by Al Skinner right there, running a little misdirection, a little shuffle cut into a baseline screen, going the opposite way. Again, missed a shot, but then a great set that, that time. 78-58 FSU, and Gola on the drive. Now they'll swing it to Mann. Mann will pull up the three and misfires over everything. Kofer can't get the roll, but he will be fouled on the way up. So Phil Kofer will head to the line to shoot a couple. Yeah. Phil Kofer has got to be this guy this year for this Florida State team. One thing I think at times they lacked last year as a basketball team, in tough games that guys can be tough enough to do that. And, again, you're seeing this guy right here. I mean, he is down there. I mean, he is. I mean, he's working. I mean, Phil Kofer is earning that scholarship check today with how hard he's playing basketball. And while Kennesaw State has not picked up a single point in the last nearly three minutes, Florida State picks up a free throw there from the senior out of Fayetteville, Georgia. Kofer now adding to his 15 points so far on the night, now up to 16, perhaps 17 here with this other free throw. And Seminoles about to hit 80 points, perhaps, in just a second. Yep. So make that an 8-0 run over the last two and a half or so minutes for Florida State. And they've extended the lead now to 22. Again, one thing you watch Florida State and what they're doing, Al Skinner's flex offense is what they call a tight flex. I mean, again, when you're in grade school, you run a flex offense, but they run it really tight, elbow to elbow. But if you just watch, Florida State had them pushed out always to the timeline that time. And, again, that's how you beat an Al Skinner type of team is pushing them out, pressuring them, expanding the floor. And, again, great job by the Seminoles defensively. I'll tell you what, Phil Kofer might be – I don't want to say in danger, but might be knocking on the door of a double-double. That's his seventh rebound. He's got 17 points. MJ Walker just off the mark, and Phil Kofer got his hand up there. Didn't come down with the ball. Otherwise, that would have been rebound number eight. Here's Scott off the mark. Up ahead to Angola. He'll lay it in, and one. Tell you what, this Florida State team is so dangerous in transition. I mean, they get that ball, they're getting going, they're getting up and down the floor. And again, when you have so many athletes running the floor, I mean, again, this is when Florida State's their best, when they are guarding, defending, getting turnovers, and getting that ball to the other end of the floor. 
An efficient day for Brian Angola, five for six from the floor. Now he'll go to the free throw line for perhaps one more. Something that is a point of concern, I guess you could say, for Florida State. They rank 14th in the ACC in free throw percentage, just over 57%. So they'll want to clean that up. Although it is early, and they have been much better so far today, Angola connects. I think Brian Angola Rodas has done such a uh a good job over the summer improving. Again, he's one of those guys, again, high volume score, can give you a lot of buckets quick off the bench. And again, they're gonna need him this year. The Yamba picks up his second, I believe, field goal of the day. And now here's Kavan Gale. As it knocked out of play, it will remain with the Seminoles with 13 seconds left to shoot. And we'll head to a break. Florida State up 83 to 60 at the under eight in Tallahassee. Back here in Tallahassee, Florida State up 83 to 60 over Kennesaw State who came into today looking for their second win on the season and their second win in program history over an ACC school. Their first one came in 2010 against Georgia Tech. But Florida State quickly, with six Phil Kofer points right out of the gate, put the Owls in an early hole, and the Seminoles have built upon that throughout the entire game. The lead has never been bigger than it's been right now. It's 23, and now here's Kavan Gali, who is fouled inside. Great time, great out of bounds, side out of bounds play coming out of the timeout again. Uh, that shows just the preparation, and again, from Coach Hammond's staff, uh, Stan Jones again, they ran a great action that time, got um, MJ Walker coming off a, um, a double screen on the baseline and again led to movement and action into a pass to Kamigali to be able to get to the free throw line. He gets to the free throw line but he can't connect on the first one. He was perfect on an earlier trip here today. He'll see if he can split the pair here and make it a 24 point lead for Florida State. And he miss, misses rather both of those. But something that we mentioned earlier was that Kavan Gali was out with a little foul trouble. And we've seen Obiagu, he had to get the start today. This is a Florida State defense without their 7-4 center in Chris Kumaji. Yet they still have held Kennesaw State to 60. And without their big man, who's been a highly efficient player so far this season, they're still scoring 84. Absolutely. I mean, you're missing a guy. You think Chris Kumaji, I mean, he's averaging almost four blocks per game. And again, a guy who's a, an incredible rim protector. The guy's also been super efficient, shooting over 50 plus percent from the field. Again, and, and they're doing that without him today. And so again, that shows the depth of this Florida State Seminoles. But it's also a great thing because it's going to get uh, young Ike some chances to get more reps as he's getting better this year. Little reverse there from Scott. And there you see Kumaji sitting on the bench with his team. A little applesauce right there. I see him getting getting right. See if they can send one over here. I know. I wonder, but he didn't even have. I mean, that was like those are like applesauce I give to my kids right there. I mean, but ah. hey, hey, you know, like back to the old school days with like the Capri Sun juicy juice yeah, kind of yeah. stuff. Kinda yeah, kind of like I had a little straw to the apple juice. And yeah, As a matter of fact, it wasn't even apple juice. Apple sauce. That's what it was. Twenty first century thing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. They. Uh, I don't think they were giving you that back in the day. Oh, my! I see they might you, want to give him some. <laughs> Holy cow. I see you, Angola, right there. The Colombian flash right there, big time. Oh, jeez. So, oh, and a steal for Forrest. Forrest will go back the other way. I see that. I think that knee's okay for Trent Forrest off that bone bruise sitting right there, a little Russell Westbrook type right after that dunk. Oh, what bone bruise? <laughs> Timeout, Kennesaw State. It's 87-62 FSU and a couple of monster dunks. Angola and Forrest and the Seminoles' lead is 25 here at the Donald L. Tucker Center. We'll be back on the ACC Network Extra. It takes hard work, grit, and determination to become a professional football player like Luke Keekley. But it only takes 15 minutes to see how much you could save on car insurance with GEICO. 
Sweden's greetings from Volvo. This holiday season, celebrate the beauty of family with our holiday offers on cars like the XC90. With more intuitive safety innovations, you can keep the ones who matter most safe. Back here in Tallahassee, Florida State up 87-62 with just over six to go. Brian Angola, do, I don't know, is it okay to uh, assume crash position still after that dunk? <laughs> Man, he went there and took it to the rim. Again, I did not know he had that in him. There's moments I've maybe seen it warm us, but I didn't think it was game ready, but big time by Brian Angola. Here we were talking about apple juice and apple sauce, <laughs> and Angola said, you guys can stop that. I've got something for you to talk about right here. He must have had some of that apple sauce at halftime. There must be something in that, man. I gotta get some of that. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> One thing I love about it, you see this Florida State team is that this Florida State team plays very, very loose. I mean, the team, it seems like they enjoy being around each other. Again, if you watch even two-time world champions go to the state, that's one of the things that they do. They seem to enjoy playing with each other, and that is a huge thing for a team. Again, you spend so much time day in, day out with this group. You got to want to like the guy. You got to want to want to be around the guys that you play with. And so many times you see teams break down as the season goes on because they just don't like to be around each other. But, again, this is a good sign for this really good Florida State Seminole team. Have yourself a day. Phil Coper. And to your point, I was talking with Phil just yesterday. I asked him, Phil, if you could identify one thing that you think is the strength of this team, what do you what do you think it would be? And he said, honestly, I think it's the team chemistry. And we talked a little bit about the role that Jamaica played in that. And I'm not talking about the tournament as Yankovic makes a three. I, I was talking about, you know, every four years, Nike will fund a trip and these teams will go somewhere. I believe the trip two trips ago was out to the Mediterranean for Florida State. Yep. This year it was Jamaica. Yep. And he said this is where, or he said that was where we really bonded and gelled as a team. Angola! I'm telling you, it's the applesauce. It is the applesauce that they're giving these guys. We need some of that applesauce right now because something's gotten into Brian Angola wrote us. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can say. <laughs> you got Phil Kofer having himself a day, Angola having one heck of a day. Seminoles in general just having a heck of a day up 91-67 with just over five minutes left to play here. Foul called against Angola on Jarrett. It's the fifth foul for Florida State, so it'll just be... Jarrett sending the ball in to Hooker. But they did a whole lot when they were down in Jamaica. They did some deep sea fishing. I found out a whole lot. I heard they did a lot of dancing, and a few of the teammates identified Phil Kofer as the best dancer on the team, to which when I asked him about it, he said, that's fake news. <laughs> <laughs> now, Terrence Mann said he might be in regards to himself, so I think we're going to have to wait and see you know, who the best dancer on this team is. But right now, it's all business, and so far, it's paying off for these Seminoles. I don't know about dancing, but I do know this. Phil Kofer is definitely having himself a day. Here's Trent Forrest, short. But even though that right now was a missed shot by Trent Forrest, Trent Forrest needs to get more game threes because, again, he's a guy who didn't shoot it from the three last year. And the one way that you build confidence is by getting those shots up in the game. So, again, though that was a miss, that was a good miss by Trent Forrest because, again, he's got to be a guy who's willing to take that because as they go into ACC play, he's got to be able to make shots. Little shuffle there from MJ Walker. Really the first travel I think we've seen from either team, to be honest. It's been pretty clean in that regard. And now here's Hooker bringing it back across for the Owls. And one thing you have to look at is that when these guys, these uh, when some of these uh, low to mid-major schools are playing these uh, these Power Five, you know, again these Power Five conference schools early on in the year. Again, these are things that are going to really help, you know, help a Kennesaw State team when they get into the A Sun play. Because again, in the A Sun, again, you're not going to be facing this type of size night in, night out, and it definitely helps you when you get into conference play. Jarrett splits MJ Walker and Cobb and Golly and draws some contact, so he'll go to the free throw line and shoot a couple. Kennesaw State trying to break the 70-point barrier. They've only done it once this season, and they picked up the win against Piedmont in that instance. They're not going to pick up the win here today, but they're playing for some pride here in these final 340. Absolutely. And again, 
when you're in these games, you know, again, it's these low major, mid major schools, they got they do some of these games, what they call these money games that they play as well. But again, not only is it able helping their program, but also it's helping them get themselves prepared. Now, again, as a coach, and again, the great thing about having a veteran coach like Al Skinner is being able to help keep their confidence. Because again, as a team potentially going one and four, one and five, you know, early on, again, it can start to weigh on your confidence. But again, when you have a veteran coach, he knows how to continue to keep these guys motivated so they get to their actual conference play and to be able to then go, because again, in the conference plays where they're going to have their opportunities to get more wins, but also get their opportunity to maybe go to the big dance because again, in the Atlantic Sun, you got that automatic bid. But again, they've got to go get some great teams in the Atlantic Sun, like especially that of Florida Gulf Coast, who's won that league the last few years, along with North Florida. Again, that's a, the Atlantic Sun's a very, very good basketball league. Kennesaw State finished fourth in the A-Sun last year. They're picked preseason number five in that conference. You mentioned Al Skinner. It's his 25th season overall as a head coach. He's been at Rhode Island. He's been at Boston College. He played at UMass with a guy by the name of Dr. J. I, I, I've heard of that guy. Yeah. You heard of him? Yeah, just, just once or twice. <laughs> just once or twice. Uh, so, again, you know, you've got a highly pedigreed head coach. And, and again, I... I don't think a lot of people realize, you know, I think Kennesaw State's a school that you've heard of time and time again. You sort of think they've been around for forever, but they've only had their program as a D1 program for 14 years. And wow. last year when they won 14 games, that was the most that they had won. They were 14 and 18. That was the most they had won as a D1 school. Wow. And I think they're actually moving in the right direction. I know they've just hired a, a brand new athletic director. Been moving again. One of the, if I'm not mistaken, the fastest growing school in the state of Georgia. So again, as they continue to get, and again, I think they got a good foundation. And they got the right guy in Al Skinner there to build the program. You see, again, you may say 14 and 18, not impressive, but like you said, 14 wins, school record. That is absolutely moving in the right direction. And I hope that Kennesaw State and their fan base can continue to support this group as Al Skinner is going to just uh, slowly plug along to try to make it a successful team. And this Owls team, you know, they'll be playing, I believe. They'll play Washington down the road. They've got some Pac-12 schools. They've got some Big 12 schools coming up. I mean, this is a team that's going to take some lumps early against some of these Power 5 schools. But in that, as you mentioned, they're going to learn what they've got, and they're going to be all the better for it in ASUN play. Absolutely. Again, these are the type of games where, you know, you get a chance to get better. You get a chance to see where you line up, where you match up with against some of uh, the better players. And, again, a team like a Florida State, this is good for them too because, again, you have to learn how to sustain effort, continue to do the things, even when you get leads and stuff like that because, again, you know, these type of leads are, are very rare when you get to ACC play with the likes of Duke and Carolina and all those guys this upcoming year. Phil Cofer just tied his career high. It was 21, and that was against Pittsburgh in 2015, and now he's got 21 here today. He's still two rebounds away from a double-double. Cobb Golly was a rebound away from it against Fordham. Now a little scramble for the rebound. It'll be Hooker who comes away with it. Again, got to love the intensity of Hooker. Scott puts it up off the mark, and now it's Yankovic who comes away with it. So some nice offensive rebounds here for the Owls. Again, one thing that Florida State has done a heck of a job today is keeping Kennesaw State out of their operating area. With that tight flex, again, they have not been able to make catches at the elbow, which they want to get to. And again, an incredible job by Florida State today. Sun will pick up a block, going up top for Cooper. <laughs> Just a little misconnect there on the alley-oop. Now 2.20 left in this game. 93-70 Florida State. Biombo off the mark. And that was rebound number nine for Phil Kofer. And that'll be where Phil Kofer's day comes to an end. So a hearty round of applause for some of the Seminoles as they make their way out and well-deserved. A good shooting day and a, dare I say, career day for Phil Kofer. The Pittsburgh game was a double-double. But to come back, I guess, especially after injury and to put together something like that, you get to prove not just to everybody else, but to yourself especially, that guess what? I still have it. Absolutely. Phil Colfer came today. I mean, like that, uh, brought his lunch pail today, had his hard hat on and got to work today, brought his uh, lunch, his lunch box and got it done. And so great day, uh, great night. Proud of that guy, Phil Colfer. Again, love seeing a guy come back from injury, being able to do the stuff he's able to do. So Wyatt Wilkes checks in. 
as does Brandon Allen and P.J. Savoy. A little misconnect there on the pass into Walker. Jared will come back the other way. He'll keep it, and he'll connect for the layup. It'll be 93 now, 72 for Kennesaw State. Inside the final couple minutes of play here in Tallahassee now. Wilkes inside to Kabangali. And Kabangali is bumped, I believe, by Yankovic. Instead, I think they will call that on Lockley. Yeah, it's Lockley. Again, great job by Fiondu that time. They decided to step up. They were going to hedge early. And then he cut back door and didn't wait. As I said, didn't held the screen, decided to uh, dive. Again, great play. Led to a foul. Great IQ by Tom Gelly. Both teams with six fouls apiece. Florida State up by 21 here late in the second half at home. Florida State scored 87 in their first game. They scored 90 in their third game. They only scored 63 in their second game. But now this is the third out of four games where the Seminoles as a team are up near 90 or over it. And that just goes to show that aside from one iffy game there against Fordham, these Seminoles are a really good shooting team, and they've got multiple different ways to score and multiple different weapons that they can score with. Absolutely. Again, I think the key is going to be for this Florida State basketball team is they, they can continue to stay together, continue to pass the ball together. And, again, more than anything else, is again, can they defend and guard? Because, again, you know, though they got 93 points, they're giving up 74. And, again, when you start getting to the ACC play, defense is going to be critical for them to have a chance to be as successful as they were, even better than they were last year. Valuable experience here for Wyatt Wilkes, who checks in. He's got more time today than he has all season. He only played in one game before this. So although we've seen a couple of mistakes out of Wilkes, he still is learning. He's a young freshman out of the Orlando area, 6'8 forward. Really like this guy, Wyatt Wilkes. He's really, really good. Really good IQ, great passer. Uh, for it is, and again, he's just going to learn. I mean, and again, you know, when you transition from high school to college, one of the biggest things at really any level is just the speed. The speed of the game just changes. And so, again, him coming from high school to college, the speed has changed for him. But again, I think Wyatt Wilkes is making a good adjustment here. Wilkes well, missing that free throw, and now here comes the Owls back the other way. Foul called there against PJ Savoy. So Kennesaw State back within 20. And I believe Scott will head to the line to shoot a couple. But to your point about Wyatt Wilkes, his father is a legendary women's basketball coach at Rollins. He's now in his 32nd season. Len Wilkes, Jr., his grandfather, was the head coach at Stetson. His uncle, Rob, was an assistant here from 2000 to 2002. So he's got some seminal legacy. He's got a lot of basketball in his blood, and he's a prospect that a lot of people around here are also really interested to see a whole lot more from. Absolutely. Grant, uh, his, like I said, his grandfather is a legendary coach here in the uh, state of Florida Long. Again, his um, as well, his uncle was, my, was one of my coaches here when I played here at Florida State. So, again, got a great basketball pedigree. Again, I think he could be uh, a guy who over the next four years can really make a big impact here for uh, Seminole Nation. Final minute of play. It's 93-76 FSU. Scott coming back the other way. Guarded by Brandon Allen. Allen, who, of course, was in the minor league system. He's got a 92-mile-an-hour fastball for what it's worth and a nice three there for Yankovic. I, I had no idea. 92 miles an hour. Yeah. Big time. Three-pitch guy, I believe, curve and a uh, change were his other two primarily. Spent some time with the Giants organization as a pitcher and, I believe, a right fielder, if I'm remembering correctly. And... Uh, now he's decided to come back and pursue basketball. He's also pursuing an engineering degree. Yeah, I tell you what, Brandon, ambitious guy. I have very ambitious guy. I mean, major league baseball, then come back to college, become an engineer. I mean, again, but one thing about him is that a guy like that, older guy, brings veteran leadership to a team with some young guys coming in. Again, people are like, he's a Brandon now is one of those guys, great locker room guy as well. And again, you need those types of guys. Again, it is more than just only what you're doing here on the floor because what you're doing off the floor, how you handle yourself off the floor is it really shows up on the floor. And again, guys like Brandon Allen are guys who bring great leadership to the Seminole basketball team that's led to a lot of their success and hopefully the continuous success they'll have this upcoming year. 37 seconds left, so there will be about a seven second differential between shot clock and game clock. Here in Tallahassee, this will be a new season high for Florida State as Scott fires away and is off the mark. And now Brandon Allen will come down with a rebound, and that should be it. Seminoles can just sort of dribble the time away here, 
and it should be a 95-79 victory for Florida State. They shot 40% from three. They shot 54% from the floor. And Florida State, at the end of the day, will go 4-0 and oh on the strength of perhaps one more three. Yep. 98-79 make it. And it will be a Florida State victory by that 19-point margin. Seminoles are 4-0 and oh on the season. And they pick up another one here at home. Impressive shooting all the way around here for Florida State, Adrian. Absolutely, great game by that Florida State Seminole team. Again, a good hard fought uh, contest, again, from Kennesaw State, and again, moving forward with that Florida State Seminole team. So Florida State picks up a 4-0 record here in Tallahassee. Another good shooting day. Savannah Slifer, I imagine, will be standing by and waiting for Phil Kofer as the teams exchange a handshake here post game. But wow, I mean, let's just go back to Phil Kofer for a second. And Phil Kofer, I mean, to me, 21 points, 9 rebounds. That's impressive stuff. You've got C.J. Walker with 12 and Gola with 17, Mann with 13, Walker with 11, and Savannah Slifer is standing by with the player of the game, Phil Kofer. Thanks, Sean. Phil, 21 points tonight, 9 rebounds, tied a career high. This offseason, what was your point of emphasis? Uh, just, you know, really getting in the gym, putting up extra shots, you know, working all on my off game, so, um, you know, it's, it feels good, you know, not be injured and, uh, you know, just be back on the court with my teammates. And you're one of three seniors on this team. What is your message to the younger teammates? Uh, really just, you know, doing the little things, keep playing hard, just the simple stuff. And one of the key things, you know, keep watching film. That's, that's one of the key things in the game right now. So just really trying to be a leader on this team. Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Savannah, thank you so much. And thank you, Phil, and congratulations on a wonderful day. 21 points, nine rebounds for Kofer, and a great day for the Seminoles as they pick up a 98-79 victory over the Kennesaw State Owls out of the Atlantic Sun. So for Adrian and for Savannah, I'm Sean Davison saying so long from the Donald L. Tucker Center in Tallahassee where Florida State wins by 19. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as others on our family of ESPN networks, log on to WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Happy early Thanksgiving from Tallahassee. We'll see you next time.